but welcome to the the picky big show a little different now we're going to do these on twitter spaces so if you're listening to the replay on youtube or podcast platforms find the biggie big on twitter and you can join these spaces live you can speak you can jump in and ask any questions that you want but today we're going to cover the topic of getting lean getting six-pack abs with different strategies yeah that's right yeah and how you can go about it without starving yourself and going through bad diets and random training routines so <laughs> me as uh wanting to get to the phone but so we're going to cover the three major things when it comes to any physique goal and that is the training we're going to cover the diet and we're going to cover supplements but well oh, i think there's thunder going on here too but um so what we're going to start we're going to start with training and interestingly enough mona has gotten shredded since she had little mia and the training she's doing would not be considered quote unquote fat loss training, and which is a complete misnomer in itself. But do you want to quickly cover what you're doing training wise, Mona, that's gotten you to this point? Yes, definitely. Okay, so just training wise, right? We're not going to talk nutrition. Yep, just, just nope, start training and we'll move on to nutrition and stuff after. Okay, so basically what I did. Um, postpartum and I'm now currently eight months postpartum and yeah like I'm even super surprised with how my body is looking and how my body's been responding to training Um, and obviously it's one of those things where genetics also does play somewhat of a a role here just because um, my mom has always naturally had like she had like a four pack and when she used to train even if it was light training her body would transform um, or at least her abs would transform always really quickly Um, so I think genetically wise I'm very lucky to have had that but the reason why my body is transformed like this so the type of training that I have been doing is um I have obviously been doing a lot of uh, like strength training bodybuilding type training um but I also didn't just jump into training right away after I had Mia. Um, it took time. It took consistency. Um, it, it just, you know, I set these little small goals for myself. And at first, it was literally just going for walks. Um, and then it was doing uh, mobility. And then it started with, you know, body weight exercises. And then, so basically what I've been doing is I have been progressively overloading. Um, and that is how my body has transformed. I mean, I'm not training hours on end um, like I did when I was an elite weightlifter. I'm literally going to the gym. If I'm not talking a lot, then I can get my training done <laughs> within like 45 minutes and even 45 minutes to an hour and like I said my goal is to get like at least three training sessions in a week Um, but yeah I've actually just been doing a leg specialization training program I first started off with like a a glute specialization program and then I switched over to our wait where where can you get those programs oh yeah and those programs are (laughs) on our app so the one thing is I've had a lot of women especially reach out to me and they're like how have you transformed your body like this eight months postpartum and one of the things that James and I have always believed in is like we want to follow by example so these training programs I ran them um, and like James said you can get them in our app um, and, and now and I've ran them I've done them um, the proof is there that my body has transformed, my glutes have transformed, my legs have transformed, my abs have transformed. Um, and yeah, we've been doing like a couple of sessions of abs here and there, like in the week and things. And basically that's the kind of training that I've been doing. So nothing specifically heat-wise, no abs specifically. Yeah, we should add that you, 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 do, you do no cardio. No cardio, Zero. yes, absolutely no cardio. Like the the amount of cardio that I would do is me walking around the block once a day with Mia. That's it. And that's a very short walk, (laughs) like a 
I yeah, that's like important to note because <laughs> yeah, because that's important because a lot of people when they think oh, fat loss, get lean, is okay. I'm just going to double down on cardio, oh, which is the exact opposite of what you want to do, as you've shown Mona with your training. I mean, you're literally lifting weights three to five times a week, and that's it. <laughs> No, definitely. And I think like you were mentioning, um, people have this misconception that in order to get a six pack um, or to get lean, I just have to do a whole bunch of cardio. Um, And especially females, that's one of the go-to things that a lot of females want to tend to gravitate to. And as soon as you say lift weights, the first thing that they think of, oh my gosh, I'm either going to look like a bodybuilder or I'm going to look like a power lifter or someone that's, uh, you know, a lot bigger, that's carrying a lot more muscle. Um, genetically, you cannot look like that. Like these people literally have, the, well, the clean bodybuilders, for example, um, they have been training for years and years and years and years on end. And some people just gen- genetically are a lot more inclined to like be toned, um, have an extra bit of muscle well, mass. Most of, most of the ones that people that women see that they don't want to look like are all juiced it's up. all juiced up, exactly. So it, it's this very blind misconception that women have. Um, and I feel like it is starting to change. There's a lot more women that are seeing that stream training is the way to go. Um, and like I said, I've had so many women postpartum reach out to me asking me, Mona, what are you doing? I need to follow this program. And I'm like, I'm just doing the leg specialization program. (laughs) I'm just doing my glute special. And they're like, can you share your diet? And I'm like, there's no special diet. Like it's, you know, um, and they are super surprised because they see me lift weights all the time. And they think that there must be some sort of like secret um, what I'm doing in order to have transformed my body, but, but there's not. And the, the most important thing is literally put a barbell in your hands, start with some strength training. Um, it's not just going to transform your body, but it's going to help you in the long run too, especially with females. It's going to help you like uh, even it's going to give you some other benefits, including like bone density increase and things like that. So you can honestly only benefit from picking up a barbell and starting to lift. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people don't really understand the reasons why that is thing. Exercise is a way to burn calories. And then by burning calories, then, okay, I'm going to lo- burn fat. Except that's not, that's not the reason to exercise when losing, when looking to get lean, because all of the changes you're going to make body composition wise is going to be done from your nutrition. The training is the stimulus to retain muscle mass, which is why doing endless forms of various conditioning or cardio, whatever you want to call it, aerobic exercise, is counterproductive because you're not doing the training to quite a, to burn what well, you can't burn fat. Just put it that way, to to burn calories. You're you're training to retain muscle mass because as you as you start to diet down and lose weight, you want to lose that weight predominantly from fat, from body fat. If you start, if you only do cardio, you're going to lose a lot of that uh, weight from muscle mass too. And that's when you get a lot of the skinny fat look, and people aren't happy. They lose a lot of weight, but they still have that little. They have that little belly. They have maybe like skinny fat arms, so they have that look. That I think they call it what they call it, like the pear shape or something. Um, and that comes from lack of muscle mass. And at some point, you just can't lose any more weight because it's, you know, it's, it's difficult. You don't have enough muscle mass to really support, uh, I mean, you could say your metabolism, but you don't have enough muscle mass to really have that look. So you have, I'm just trying to talk on me, it's got her fingers in my mouth. Um, <laughs> so you have, you have to lift weights as your primary form of exercise if you're undergoing a proper fat loss um, or getting lean phase of training. Now, where where cardio or conditioning comes into it is that's kind of like your ace card tool. Now, obviously, some form of acti- like aerobic activity is good for general health. So I'm not saying not to do it, 
so if you generally oh. just do walks like a few walks a week with your family or walking the dog whatever that's cool that's perfect um if you don't and you kind of just do a little bit of cardio here and there that's that's cool too it's good for your health but using that as your way to lose weight isn't uh the primary goal of it so it's something like for example you've been lifting weights for the past i don't know six weeks and you've been dieting down nutrition wise and then you see you know your weight loss is kind of slowing down a bit you don't want to you've kind of lowered your calories quite a bit you don't want to take out more food that's when you're looked okay i'm going to increase my activity a bit and that will save you from removing more food so you can still nudge that scale down or do your body your uh, measurements etc so that's where that comes in for uh, for weight training programs for fat loss, there is no such thing. Weight training programs for fat loss, for gaining muscle, are pretty much the exact same. You might just have a little less volume as you get deeper into your fat loss phase um, in the weight training program just because you have less food in you, so you can't recover as quickly and you don't have the energy to get maybe get through a, a full hard workout. But the program is pretty much exactly the same you're going to lift over a variety of rep ranges if it's purely for physique you might be looking from eight to 20 reps depending on the exercise um even as low as six if it's um if you're a little more on the strength side as well you might look at you know one to 20 reps um probably more like three instead of one so these are just things to con consider within the training there's no such thing as a fat loss workout doing high reps of everything is not going to help. You want to lift like you build muscle because that is what is going to retain the muscle. So variety of rep ranges, you're going to probably do two to four sets of most exercises, lifting through a full range of motion. And that's kind of, uh, yeah, Mia, that's, uh, that's kind of the weight training in a nutshell. Because um, how does your program look, Mona? Because you're, you're obviously doing a leg specialization, so you're focusing heavily on the lower body with a couple of uh, upper body days. But... Uh, I mean, you're doing a, a, a large variety of high rep stuff and some heavier stuff. Yes, this program is actually like, honestly, one of my favorites. I'm currently actually on block three um, of the leg specialization program. And it's I think it's been like four weeks per cycle. And yeah, so I've, I'm basically going now and I'm like on week nine or 10 of this uh, leg specialization program. And like you mentioned, it's a, huge variety um but at the end of the day also it's like that consistency and that progressive overload um and before i quickly explain how the leg specialization program um is basically set out the thing is which i think a lot of people have also this misconception of is they will pull up their phones and they'll see um and i've mentioned this before as well they'll see their favorite influencer um, someone on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, and they'll be like, oh, this person has a six pack. I'm going to do their workout. And then the next day you see another one and you're like, oh, I'm going to do their workout. Um, and that's absolutely the wrong way to do it. Yes, if it gets you into the gym and it just gets you to start working out, that's a good place to start. But at the end of the day, if you want to see results, you have to be consistent. Um, you have to progressively overload. You have to do the same stuff over and over again. Um, like I said, with progressive overload and there's different ways that you can progressively overload as well. Um, and we've, we've spoken about this in like previous podcasts where, you know, you can increase in load, you can increase in tempo, you can increase, um, you know, in volume um, and sets, etc. So those are the things that it's important. And that's actually how, you will see our programs are structured even in our Lift Big Eat Big app. Um, and the thing is, like, that's at the end of the day, that's how you are going to see results. Now, the way that my leg specialization program is set out, and this is the one thing when I actually have said to people, oh, I'm doing a leg specialization program, they're like, oh, I, I don't want to do just legs. And you're like, no, 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 it's not just legs. Um, so basically, even this one that I'm doing and even the glutes one that I was doing before, it's five days of training a week and it consists of three leg days and two upper body days. So it will be legs, upper body, legs, upper body, legs like that. Now, I am going to be honest. There are weeks that like I, 
I can't get five trainings in. I mean, this is one of those weeks, for example, I've only done two trainings and I have to be realistic. You know, I am a mom. Um, sometimes my little one does need me a lot more. So obviously she's my main priority. And then I just have to put training a little bit more onto the like back burner. But what I then will end up doing is I'll either do like shorter versions of that workout um, or I'll try and get, you know, a quick workout in here, here or there. Um, but ultimately, I say to myself, you know, like I said earlier, like my goal is three trainings a week. So what I've actually been doing is like if there's weeks where I can't get all five of my days in, you know, I don't get discouraged. I don't say to myself, you know, um, and this is where a lot of people fall off the bandwagon because they will say, oh, this week I only got two trainings in or three trainings in. I didn't get my full five, so I might as well just quit my training program. And, you know, once you've mentally quit, it's easier to continue to quit. And then a lot of people are just like, okay, I'm just going to stop training altogether. That you can do. Um, and that's why I like how in our app you can do, for example, say day one, day two, day three. You choose your days which you want to do those in. And like say, if I can't do day four in that same week, I have to do it the following week. Then I'll go and say on the Monday or Tuesday, do day four. And the day after that or whatever, do day five. Um, so I still make sure that even if I don't get a 12-week program in in 12 weeks, if it takes me longer, if it takes me 14 weeks or 15 weeks, um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still sticking to the program. I'm sticking to, you know, I don't skip days. And that's exactly why, you know, over the years, I've been able to see results. Um, so yeah, it's not always going to be easy. You're not always going to be that person who's going to be able to train like an elite athlete. Um, but at the end of the day, if you can just be somewhat consistent um, and say to yourself, you know, okay, what realistically can you commit to? And if someone says to me, realistically, they can only commit to three sessions, then I say, okay, then let's make that your goal. Three sessions and then whichever ones you can do extra those are bonuses um, and that works because at the end of the day being realistic and then if you can do extras is much better because mentally the person doesn't feel like a failure and I tend to see a lot more results even in my my athletes or my clients that way yeah I think we'll touch on touch on that uh, idea probably in every episode uh, going forward, and it's the idea of you don't have to fit everything into a seven-day microcycle or or a seven-day week. So, if you can only train three times a week, yes, you can look for a three times a week program. That's all good. But say the program is five days a week, you do what Mona's saying. You you now do a ten or fourteen-day microcycle, which means you only need to hit those five days over ten or fourteen days versus seven, and you reduce the training anxiety. You don't feel like oh, I have to go and get this and get do my workout or whatever you've committed to three days you do day one day two day three then the following week you'll do day four day five day one and that keeps you consistent it keeps the training anxiety at bay and it gets you through the program just as you would if you were doing it all within the week it just extends the program you're still going to get you're still going to get results out of it doing a five four five six day a week program three times a week the mistake people make is oh, I can only train three times a week on this five-day week program, so I'm going to ram the other two days into my workouts and double them up. That's a big, big mistake. Don't do that. Just do a longer micro cycle so you can get the training in without jamming it all onto a single day. Um, the other thing people do is they'll, they'll say they'll do day one, day two, day three, and then they, they missed the other two days. Then they'll kind of like repeat the week because they feel like they missed they missed it. They didn't complete the week, so they repeat the week again. But you don't need to do that. Just continue on day four, day five, as an example. Um, especially when you're looking at just consistency for fat loss. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that regarding training, Mona. Um, nope. I think we covered it all. Um, honestly, like I said, I think if if there's one point to take out of it, it's just 
you know, firstly, okay, maybe I'll give two points. Um, be consistent and just start. Honestly, if you can do those two things, you know, get your foot in the door, just start, even if it's just, and again, we've said this so many times before, but it's so true. If you can just get 15 minutes of training done, um, 15 minutes is better than nothing at the end of the day. Um, get yourself to, you know, you can either do some exercises at home um, and then you can start to buy yourself, even if it's some cheap equipment. Like, honestly, you can start to do strength training at home and you can get the cheapest of equipment. I know here in the USA, we've seen so many shops that sell like secondhand equipment and there's like Craigslist and um, you know, even on Amazon, they'll have like specials and things like that. And that's how you can also start to like collect and start to build up your home gym. You don't need to have to drive to a home or to a commercial gym in order to get a strength training in. Um, I think a lot of people are also really scared when it comes to training because they're like, I don't want to just walk into this commercial gym where there's people who know what they do and the one thing is no one cares like when you are in those gyms if you are a newbie and you have no idea also where what is and you walk around and look at things everyone is so focused on their own self and their own training like no one actually cares about other people other than themselves so if you do go and you know you do worry that other people are going to be looking like don't because it, it's just one of those things where you just have to take that first step. But if you are scared, go and get yourself some equipment and start building up your own home gym. Yep, those are a great point. That's your, I want to add as well about um, people like to – I think people still think you can spot reduce body fat. So what, what I mean by that is if you just do a lot of ab work – you're going to predominantly burn fat around your midsection, which has been proven false many, many, many years ago. So if you're looking, if you're, say you find a fat loss, quote unquote fat loss program online, and it's about how to shrink belly fat, and it's just... This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. A bunch of ab exercises that's going to get you nowhere. There's just not enough work there to... I mean, you're not maintaining any muscle mass around your body, right? So... You need to just train, again, like a typical muscle building training program and not try and just target a specific area that you think you're going to lose fat on just because you're training that area. So just bear that in mind. But I think we'll move on to the nutrition side because the other, well, the other most important side is your diet. And you won't see any weight loss or fat loss unless you're in a calorie deficit. And how you achieve that calorie deficit is entirely up to you but there are some rules that you should follow to maximize its effectiveness um so the the first rule is it should be slow and that means like a 200 to 300 calorie deficit initially from your maintenance so for example if 2500 calories maintains your body weight then you're probably going to have to start at like 2300 2200 calories to see your body weight come down body weight is just an easy way to see if you are losing body fat obviously it costs more and is a little more uh i guess time consuming to go somewhere and try and get accurate readings of muscle mass and body fat and it's not something you're going to do every week so just the scale is just an easy way of measuring if you're seeing progress if you're lifting weights most of that weight will be lost from body fat so 200 to 300 calorie deficit, if you're not tracking, you don't know, you can either start tracking to get an idea of what your maintenance is, or you can start to look to just reducing your typical portion sizes or re- stop snacking, or you can look to switch out all your full sugar or full high calorie condiments and drinks for zero sugar diet versions and zero calorie condiments. Like if you um, obviously Coke to Coke zero, Sprite to Sprite zero. Um, and then for your condiments, you know, using mustard hot sauce that have zero calories because they're vinegar based, um, using low fat, low sugar, like low fat ranch, low sugar barbecue sauce, all those things are options too, to reduce your calorie intake. If you are using the full um, 
calorie versions of those and that's such a simple f- switch that will instantly put you into a calorie deficit if you're using them often and then outside of the calories it's about protein and if there's one macronutrient for you to track if you're not tracking already i mean we did a whole episode on this uh, last week on tracking macros start with tracking your protein you should you should hit on the on the higher end of the range when you are looking to lose body fat it seems that there is a muscle sparing uh, property around that when you're ingesting more protein than if you were gaining weight so typically when you're gaining weight i mean you're looking at 0.8 grams per pound um, per day of protein or 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day when you're gaining weight you can still hit that when you're losing weight as well there's not a problem but going more closer to one gram or even slightly above one gram per pound uh, or above 2.2 per kilo of body weight of protein may be more beneficial now obviously this kind of depends on you know do you struggle to eat that much protein <laughs> do you eat uh, a lot of protein typically you know if not you can stick with the lower range there, but that's just something to be aware of. Then outside of that, with your carbohydrates and fats, you can play around with that however you like. It kind of just depends on how you like to eat. Um, so if you like a higher carbohydrate diet and lower fat because it gives you energy to train, etc., do that. If you like a lower carbohydrate diet and higher fat because that's how you typically eat, do that. It's not going to matter too much. Um, I will say, though, if you are more performance orientated, you want to lift hard in the gym or you lift hard or you play a hard, intense sport, I will go on the higher carbohydrate end. Um, if you're just kind of weekend warrior, you just want to you know, do whatever a lot better, you, that probably doesn't matter as much. Um, and then touching outside of that on various diets, so obviously everyone's promising you Insane results, intermittent fasting, one meal a day, carnivore, vegan. Uh, shit, there's probably some new ones that I kind of don't even know that have blood type diets, whatever else. They're all bullshit. Um, there are, there's nothing special about any of them. They're all just elimination diets that reduce your calorie intake because you eliminate a whole food group or certain type of food. So obviously... With intermittent fasting, you're not eliminating food, but you're shortening the eating window, so it's difficult to eat the calories that you normally would, hence putting you in a calorie deficit. There is nothing else special about it. Um, Same thing with carnivore, vegan, keto, all that stuff. You're eliminating a whole bunch of food, typically putting you in a calorie deficit. It doesn't mean you're not going to gain weight if you're eating a lot of the food. For example, in keto, if you eat a shit ton of fat, you're going to go over your calorie intake very, very quickly. Um, I think you've experienced that, haven't you, Mona? Can you just repeat that last point? <laughs> oh, okay. Not listening to me. I see. Um, but you've experienced not losing weight or gaining weight on like a paleo keto diet because of how much fat you're eating, right? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Those diets like, can pull the wool over your eyes so easily because um, a lot of people, and especially it was a fad back when CrossFit, I think it was about, gosh, maybe about like 10 years ago when CrossFit just came onto the scene um, and it started to become mainstream, very popular. Um, and, and just to like tell people a bit about, you know, what the, the paleo consists of. Now, people also did what they call like the whole study. So it's basically like you will eliminate things like sugar, alcohol, grains, legumes, uh, soy, dairy, those kind of things. And um, at the end of the day, uh, and also eat no processed foods. So a lot of people would then basically gravitate towards eating, you know, just whole foods, which is in essence really good. But then you would have a woman especially that I I would find um, would snack on just a whole bunch of fats throughout the world. Paleo balls. Paleo balls, yes, exactly. So that is where a lot of people actually made a lot of money. And still to this day, like if you're going to like Whole Foods and things, um, they have like, or they had, or and, and even other, you know, health shops and things like that, they've got like paleo sections. And people see paleo and they're like, ooh, healthy. Um, and yeah, the stuff will be full, full, full of fat. Um, and I actually fell into that trap, I'll be honest. And I would eat a 
shit ton of fat. And literally, I felt swollen. I felt bloated. Um, I felt sluggish. Um, I would literally feel like I would eat myself into a coma. Um, and to be honest, like eating those kind of diets actually gave me a bad relationship with food because the more I ate of it, the more I wanted to eat. And I would find myself just like grabbing a whole bunch of nuts and maybe sitting by my computer, getting some work done. Um, and I would just munch down, you know, as much uh, almonds as I can. I will sit with a spoon and I'll eat almond butter like out of a thing. I actually used to freeze like macadamia butter and I used to eat it like an ice cream. And I could finish a tub of macadamia butter a day. And like if you think about it, like now if, if I eat like almond butters and stuff like that, it, like for meals, I would have like a tablespoon. Um, and I would measure that Damn. tablespoon. That's the ultimate bulking strategy right there. Yes. Freeze your yes. whole nut butter thing. <laughs> I, I honestly would eat myself into a coma. And that's how bad it was. And, you know, I back then, way back then, I didn't know any better because everyone was doing it and everyone was talking about it. And, you know, I fell into this trap of, um, you know, seeing CrossFit athletes doing the paleo diet, etc. And I thought to myself, well, if I do the paleo diet, I'm going to be ripped like that. And, and, and now none of them do it. Exactly. <laughs> none of them do it. They will all eat carbs you will see them high, carb. high carbs you see them eat you know things like cupcakes you will see like actually yeah they'll have like the complete opposite to that they will have sugars they will have carbs um they will drink you know every now and again they'll drink like fizzy drinks with like sh high sugars and things like that so um they won't avoid legumes um so it just shows you like something that just comes up do your, do your research um, about things like that and, you know, make sure that whatever, if, if you do want to try anything and maybe you've just been like stuck in a rut, um, you know, I always recommend, you know, reaching out to like a professional and things like that because when it comes to food and stuff, like balance is always really important. But I feel like food especially, um, there's a big mental aspects to how people eat um and i've worked with fat loss clients before and i know for a fact like there are some people who will like they'll follow the diet for like a little while and then they'll just like you know they'll they'll fall off the bandwagon and people won't be like 100 percent honest with you um and then once you get to like the root cause of why they are doing this you'll often see that there's potentially a trauma involved um, and they gravitate towards food as like their safe place. And when you do that, you know, unfortunately, it is going to be hard to see results and it is going to be hard for you to lose that weight. But then to deal with the, the things behind why you are eating that way or why you tend to gravitate towards these things, you'll often see it's like a low confidence um, issue or it's someone that's maybe been bullied or someone that just has um, just maybe experienced some trauma in their life um, and they they want to go to start towards something that makes them feel better and I tend to see like a lot of females do that so if you can mentally get yourself to a point where you know you can get help and you can speak to a professional that would that could actually be the thing that could make a massive difference in your eating, how you approach food, having a better relationship with food, and then ultimately, you know, combined with your training, see results as well, um, the, the physical results. And you'll, and, and you'll feel a lot more confident as well. Yeah, those are great points on the psychology side as well, obviously with your background. And I just want to finish off the nutrition section as well. People will say, you know, you can't lose weight eating high carbs because, you know, carbohydrates and sugar is the reason everyone's fat, which is, you know, completely false. And the whole insulin model of obesity has been disproven repeatedly through various studies. So, I mean, I'm doing it right now. I'm dieting down on high carbs. I've done it many times before um, just for our 
couples photo shoot and just to prove a point again um i started at about 190 pounds now um which is what 88 kilos i'm now down to 83 so that's five kilos so down like 10-ish pounds um in the past couple of weeks a few weeks and that's eating predominantly carbohydrates in my diet so it's Typically high protein, one gram per pound of body weight, and then low fat, about 25% of my calories are from fat, and the rest is from carbohydrates, which makes it about, uh, I think it ends up being 45 or 50% carbohydrates, um, and that's how I've been doing it, and obviously because I train and want to have some intensity in training, I can do that, and even if you weren't training intensely, you could still do that. Um, it's just all about the calorie deficit. Um, not the actual carbohydrates themselves. But I guess we'll move on to supplements. Um, I know Mona loves her supplements. She has a few that she really likes. But we'll preface the section to tell you there's no such thing as a fat burner <clears throat> or a fat burning supplement. Obviously, it's a big market, the weight loss pill market and weight loss powders, etc. There's just no such thing. Um, if it worked, we wouldn't have so many fat people. <laughs> So they don't work. They don't do anything. There's been no research to or evidence to suggest they do anything. Because remember, to lose body fat, it's a long-term objective from reducing your calorie intake. And powders and pills don't do that. Um, it's just as simple as that. But there are some supplements that can help you on your journey. And I think the main ones are uh, whey protein, a meal replacement or mass gainer, which sounds counterintuitive, but is potentially an option. And creatine. And then obviously other vitamin, vitamin D and fish oil and stuff. But um, is there anything, Mona, that you would add to your list of things that you like? Um, honestly, the only other thing that I would add is uh, caffeine <laughs> as, a, as a supplement oh, yeah. as well. That's a good call. Yeah, um, I tend to find that if I do have some caffeine, I do have like a little bit of an extra boost. And even though sometimes it's just placebo, um, but when I have it, I go into the gym and I just have like that, let's go, I'm ready uh, type of um, feeling. And that for me has been, yeah, it's been a game changer, especially with having a little one. Like, I think I've always loved caffeine, but now I've got a big pre appreciation for it. <laughs> yeah, because you used to drink bang energy drinks at 5 p.m. because you didn't know I had caffeine. Yes, exactly. And I think <laughs> that's actually, you know, and, and speaking about that, I mean, a lot of people like we also speak about, you know, how like, yes, training is important, nutrition is important, like things like vitamin D or seeing sun, etc. Like so, but to also see results and to have you know, give your body that time to like build muscle and rest and stuff like that. Um, people don't often get enough, you know, sleep in. And it's often because they on this like, go, 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 go train. And like what you were saying now, past 5pm, they'll have either energy drinks or caffeine of some sort, etc, or even fat burners. And they can't sleep. And if you can't sleep, um, you know, it's just this vicious cycle where you're just going to feel even more tired, more fatigued. Um, you're not going to have anything less left to even, you know, fill your own cup, go into the gym, do the things that you enjoy. And often what you'll tend to see is until someone actually, like their body will just kind of shut down and they'll either, um, you know, mentally break down or they'll just get sick so those are like the signs that you know you do kind of need to take a bit of a step back if you know you are that person who's just like on the go 100 percent um yeah your your body will tend to give you those warning signs yeah no definitely on that and i'll jump straight into to some of the supplements i mentioned <laughs> And why? But the first one, obviously, protein powder. If you struggle to hit your protein goals, that's an option. I will say though, protein powder is not going to fill not going to fill you up on its own. So if you drink, for example, a whey protein shake, and then I don't know, you have some carbohydrates with it, whatever, for breakfast, you're not going to be you're not going to stay very full for very long. Versus if you had your protein from eggs, for example. 
Um, so bear that in mind because you're in a calorie deficit and you're likely going to be hungry. Drinking away protein shake probably isn't <laughs> the best option if you can do it from food. Um, however, you can add it to food. For example, protein and oats is, is a um, good example of something you can do to have your protein intake but still have something that is filling. So bear that in mind. Mass gainer, obviously, do, you know, that doesn't say anything to us fat loss, but what mass gainer is is <laughs> a high-calorie meal replacement. Now, you can find good ones that aren't full of shit and, like, thousands of calories in a serving. So, um, for example, Redcon 1 does a really good one that's, like, animal-based and uses, like, dehydrated sweet potato and things like that. So, like, if you need, like... 500 calories on the go or something, that can be something that you do. However, again, because it's powder form and liquid, it's not going to keep you full for very long. So also bear that in mind. But it's an option to say if you're on the go and you can't eat whatever it is in the day at all and you need something, that is something to think about. Um, obviously, you have the Fairlife 30-gram protein RTDs, if anyone's in the States um, and goes to Costco. Those are legit. And then, obviously, creatine. Um Creatine is bomb. You should just be taking it every single day. It's going to help you be stronger, do more reps in the gym. Um, it's basically like an instant energy source that you can use during high-intensity activity. So taking it is a no-brainer, and no, there are no side effects that you're going to get from it unless you buy a taint in creatine. So if you want a proper creatine, buy it from Lift Big Eat Big. Shop at liftbigeatbig.com. Um, and then outside of that, obviously, you've got your other typical vitamins and things like that. It, you know, it depends if you're deficient and various things like that. Vitamin D3 is typically a good one to take regardless. Um, there's some interesting research coming out of Scotland now um, showing uh, improvements in aerobic and anaerobic conditioning by taking high-dose vitamin D, like very high-dose, dose, like 50,000 IUs a week, which is very, very interesting. Um, so that could be something to consider. And obviously, you got your fish oils and things like that if you need those omega-3 fats and things. Um, but outside of that, <clears throat> oh, and then obviously, motivation mentioned caffeine. Yep, caffeine before the gym and stuff is all good. Obviously, just don't have it too late in the evening. Um, if you're in late in the evening, you can, I mean, if you like it, pump pre-workouts. I know Mona loves to take her pump pre-workouts. Interestingly enough, a lot of the benefits from these things are from taste. Some interesting research around taste and performance-enhancing uh, benefits. So it's often why if you drink like if you drink pre workouts normally and you get energized and you drink something like that doesn't have caffeine, like a pump that has a similar flavor, you'll kind of feel like you had a caffeine pre workout. That's one of the reasons why. Um but outside of that, that's cover supplements. It's not such a huge thing. It's just more of a, you know, if you can't get your food in, it's something you can take. Um, but it's not a it's not a be all end all. You can do it without them. Is there anything you want to add to that, Mona? Um, I actually wanted to say regarding the supplements, it's, oh my gosh, like people think that there's this magic pill out there. And I actually, I often have, and like I say, I often have women reach out to me um, and I feel like it's not something that gets spoken about a lot, but people think like you can just go to the supplement shop and that's how people make money. You know, the people who sell supplements, et cetera is there will be, you'll walk into a supplement shop, it will be so full of supplements, it's overwhelming. When you go there and you go and ask the person who's working, you know, at one of the supplement shops and you say, hey, what do you recommend I take? The person will most often take you to the thing that they will get the biggest commission for. Um, it's not about them 100% believing that that thing is going to help you. In fact, they know it's not going to help you, um, but it's for them to sell it and for them to market something to you that if you take this, you will see results. And then they'll take it and they'll be like, okay, well, maybe the next month I'll see results or maybe the next month. And months and months and months will go by and you spend thousands of dollars on you know supplements and fat loss products etc um but at the end of the day the answer is in getting your training in eating foods making sure that you get enough protein in you know if if i've women always reach out to me and they're like hey mona like is there anything that you take or anything that you recommend and i'm like no like honestly if how's your eating and then they're like 
yeah, I don't eat so good, but, you know, is there maybe like a supplement that can help? And I'm like, nope. You need to make sure that your eating needs to be 100% first. Um, make sure you get enough protein in, you know, if, if you can track that at least. And, you know, instead of throwing them into like uh, like the deep end when you're like, oh, okay, you need to track your calories 100% in order to see results because it's not always possible. Stuff like that can overwhelm people. But if it at least if you can know how much protein you are taking and seeing if you hit your protein goals, that in itself will already make a massive difference because most people tend to undereat protein. Um, they won't even know that they're under eating it. And as soon as they hit their protein goals, they'll feel more satisfied. Um, they'll feel like the energy levels increases. They won't gravitate towards like all the sweet things, etc. And they also will stop having that like skinny fat look because now actually they give their body what they need to actually help them build muscle and then help them obviously um, recover better in their training. So again, if you are that person who walks into a supplement shop and you think that there is a magic pill out there or powder, let me tell you straight and James will tell you the exact same thing. There isn't. Um, hit your nutrition goals, get your training in, you know, if after that you want something extra, uh, like James mentioned, you want to add in some creatine, maybe you battle to eat your protein goals, um, go for, you know, your weight protein, um, and then just making sure, like James mentioned, getting in your fish oils and your vitamin D. If you can just have that already, you are, you are set. Don't waste your money on stupid things like that. Rather spend it on getting a coach or signing up to the Lift Big Eat Big training app. <laughs> nice plug. And that's a great way to, to end this podcast episode today. But yeah, hit to liftbigeatbig.com. You'll find the training app there and everything else we have. Um, also, make sure you find us on Twitter, Lift Big Eat Big on, or at Lift Big Eat Big on Twitter. You can give us a follow there. 